it looks like shreds in the, in the center. Yeah, in the center. Yes. So when it gets too All right, everybody. Um, yeah. We are in the thing with Michael. About a minute away, Jim is using the restroom. You told us that start. 30 minutes ago. <laughs> you know, sir, we're going to need security on you. <laughs> Take care of that guy. What do I need to do? You're security, so. Uh, so everyone that came in today, thanks for being patient. Uh, totally a faux pas here with the, uh, or is it a foo bar? I don't know. With the lathe being oh. wired wrong. But uh, we're a little late online, but Jim is going to do his thing here. <laughs> we got to reverse the wire wrong. Yep. I, I, I gave you a premature. Okay. No so no so we can, so I can talk about what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> we're live, so if anyone online has a question, Amy's monitoring and we'll shout them out. And if anyone here has a question, you know, throughout the thing, just shout them out. Jim's real good about it. Um, anything before we begin? Yeah, question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. When are we going to begin? In, oh. just, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to begin. <laughs> Any other questions? No <laughs> other questions, actually. Okay. All right. Uh, real quick, let's see. We got some out of towners here. You're out of town. You're Scottsdale. Ooh. Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver, Washington. Mesa. Mesa. Arizona. Indianapolis, Indiana. Did you guys come just for this weekend? Yeah. Awesome. Mesa. Mesa. Ooh. Oh, I know. That's okay. No, I'm just kidding. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Nashville. Where, where are y'all from, sir? Nashville. Y'all fixing to come on? Okay. Nashville. We got Texas. Central Texas. Central Texas. Anchorage, Alaska. Whoa. That's a tough right, one to beat. Anchorage, wow. Alaska. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Okay. Eight blocks from here. Eight blocks. That's pretty <laughs> close. We got Rich from Maricopa. Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. We on a mic? No, we can be though if you'd prefer. But it's quiet. There's only. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Let me turn it up here. Wow. Kill the power here, Chad. Yeah, that's special. <laughs> power nice is cool. One. Thank you. All right, we're going to mic it up for, for everyone Parks. online. exciting all right Let's see if we got a mic live here Amy let me know if that's better and I will put it on Jim when he is ready we'll have to find a way to clip him so uh, this is going to be multi-start threading right Jim yes, sir. and the whole per point of it is for a kitless pen so if you're making a pen without a kit and you want a cap and body that match nicely and you don't want to use a tap and die this is one way to do it. Now, I will probably warn you, Jim is going to make it look a lot easier than it is. So it does take practice to get good at this. Right, Jim? It, it does. Um, however, not to, not to emasculate any of you guys, I was able to teach my 22-year-old niece to multi-start thread by an afternoon. So huh? it is not as hard. It does take a little effort on y'all's part to, to learn and understand your machine. Um, there's tons of videos on YouTube that talk about threading to get you started. Um, but a lot of y'all who, who get into this custom pen making, you go out and you buy seven, six, eight thousand dollar lathes, and you're running caps and dies on it. You're not utilizing the machine. It's a waste of money. If you get your new cap and dies, stay home and do it with a wood pen. But if you're really going to go all in, and be a pen maker, you need to learn to thread. So what? It's, it's really not too bad. So what Jim is talking about are the threads, the cap, and the body for the internal. Uh, does everyone make custom pens yet? Anyone make them? On the list. On the list? On the list. You made one? I've, I've made a couple. Anyone else? Oh, good. Fresh. Now, as a person who sells taps and dies, there's nothing wrong with using taps and dies. So don't let Jim scare you away no, from that. And I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying here. I'm totally don't, messing don't with you, Jim. Jim, I'm messing with you. On a metal lathe. I think it's good to know both. Like you really need to, you know, have both <laughs> options. So. Uh, that one's on there. I got it. It's running in reverse. You want it in reverse? Yes. Okay. Let's go. 
All right, let me put this little mic on you, Jim. Oh, boy. Let's see. I don't know where to put it. Clip it to my beard? Yeah, your, your, your lobe. Is that going to bother you? Nope. Okay. Should be fine. Amy, Jim's mic up now. All right. Hi, Amy. How do I sound? All right, so okay. in case you don't know, this is Jim Hines from the Hines Pen Company. Jim is probably the number two or three independent pen maker in the world, right? Would you say? No, top, lower top ten. They're, they're, I'm well, number three. I'm going to go three. I'm going to go two. Okay. Right. So Jim's a wealth of knowledge. Um, he's going to say a lot of stuff. Retain what you can if you want to take notes. We are going to have this on the Turner's TV channel so you can rewatch it, which is a good thing for taking notes and stuff um but he'll be here all weekend to answer questions and whatnot so thanks jim you're welcome guys and i will be available I'll, i got cards for those of you here those of you not here go to heinzpens.com if you got questions and you're willing to wait a couple days for me to catch up on email i've been out of town since last thursday um i will answer them all uh, because I know once we start talking through this, there's going to be a, a whole bunch of questions. First thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about what we're going to do and why. Um, and then utilizing some old American iron, show you a little tips and tricks on how we can make this more convenient. Um, I've been doing threads on some of our higher priced models now for three years. Um, the method I'm going to show you today is a method I learned from Tim Cullen who's a fabulous pen maker in Georgia. Um, he just kind of opened my eyes to, to make use of, better use of the machine here. And it's, it's really proven useful and quick. Um, the old method I used to use, anybody know what a, doesn't know what a multi-start thread is? You all know what they are, right? The theory behind, okay. Okay, so a Pepsi bottle, Coke bottle, Okay. The reason you can turn it tight in two turns is because there's four helixes for the thread inside. And what happens is it turns or closes the gap four times for each one revolution. So in the case of a triple start tap and die set, if you're, if you're doing like a M13 by one, you got to like turn seven, eight times on a tenon that's 0.290 long. It's, it's ridiculous. The multi-start thread you divide that by three and you get a turn and a half. So it doesn't affect holding strength, it affects the amount or the distance traveled for each revolution. And it's been used for years in, in industry, uh, in food industry. You see them all over, you just don't realize it. They're particularly useful in pen caps because people don't want to have to screw a pen closed and open you know, for 30 seconds, right? So we're going to do a four start thread today, um, which means there's going to be two locations where grain will line up with wood or whatnot. So as opposed to only having one location on a triple start thread, you all tried to get that one sweet spot going. Um, and you can control the diameters. You're not limited to 11 or 10 through 15 millimeter. Um, my biggest pen, John can show you here, it's a 45 60 fourths. 36 TPI thread. Basically, it's 18 millimeter thread in English terms with four starts. I could go bigger. I could go smaller. Um, when you have a machine like this, the, the sky's the limit. And these old pieces of iron, if you can find them, South Bend 9, Light 10, or Heavy 10, beautiful machines. Atlas 10 or 12 are great pen maker lathes. Okay, and, and atlases you can get under $2,000. As long as they're not beat to hell and rusted, all, all get out. And they'll have a gearbox. This gearbox lets me pick the thread pitch I'm going to run. So right now I've got it set on A, and I, I don't know what this letter is, but it's set on nine threads per inch. We're going to cut four nine thread per inches, right one on top of another. They're going to stack together, and that'll create the starts. In order to accomplish that, there's two ways you can do it. You can offset the compound here with a, a dial indicator by the pitch. So the pitch of the thread we're cutting is 0 .2, 0 .0 .2, don't quote me on it, 977, 
carried out. Okay? So we'd cut the first thread, and then the second thread with the compound at 90 degrees, we'd move it forward or backwards, doesn't matter, that pitch 0 0.0297, and then cut the next thread. And that's how you do it. It works great, but it's hard to test. The method we're going to use today is going to take advantage of the fact that we have an eight TPI lead screw. And we've got a, a I forget what the gear is in the thread dial. What this is going to let us do is I've divided the thread dial and we'll try and get some close up still shots. Thread dial's got four numbers on them, one through four. And then at halfway points between each number, there's another tick line that isn't numbered. So you figure one through eight. What we're doing is in between the one and that first tick mark, at the dead center, we're putting a, a second physically drawn line. So number one is the first thread. That physically drawn line in between one and the next one is the second thread. The next line that isn't numbered is the third thread. And the next hash between that next number and the next partition is the fourth thread. So we let the lead screw do the offset rather than traversing back and forth. What that lets us do is we're going to cut the body threads here, okay, and we're going to cut them to the spec thread depth, spec specified thread depth. And then when we start cutting the cap, we're going to stop a couple thou short, and we're going to make sure the cap, see how it fits into the body. So you can tailor the thread for a perfect fit on the cap. Not too sloppy, not too tight. How many times, uh, the guys who've made pens, how many times have you had to adjust or tighten the die or rerun it or do a number of things because you got tight threads? This completely alleviates that issue. Okay. Now in order to do this, normally when you're cutting a thread on a metal lathe, you're cutting towards the headstock. Uh, the tenon size I'm using is the 0 .290. It's not really big, okay? It's less than 5 sixteenths of an inch. To try and stop that and not crash in that shoulder is almost impossible. So we're going to use uh, a method that's, that's been made very famous by a gentleman, Joe Pizinski, in Austin, Texas. We're going to thread away. How are you? Good. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even see you there. We're going to thread away from the headstock, okay? So I don't have to worry about stopping it. We have a positive stop here so that I have the same starting point every time. That part becomes key. If you change the starting point, then the geometry with the lead screw is going to be all out of sync. Okay? Now, that was a lot of information in a short period of time. Do we have any questions before I go further? We all kind of got the idea? Okay, now, everybody here and everybody online, I've not cut a single thread on this machine yet. I'm hoping everything goes fine. We've had a, a couple hiccups this morning, but, uh, you know, cross your fingers. Oh, you know, yeah, I'm all good. Okay, so, I've already taken the liberty of cutting this to size. We're going to do a essentially a 5 8 36 TPI thread. That'll be the finished thread. It'll be kind of fine. Um, so this is already cut down to 6 22 and 5 tenths. And then the cap has already been bored. Uh, it's at a little bit, I think it's at like 598. So we took a 16 or 15 millimeter drill bit, bored it out, and took a couple thou over the top. This is going to be a little loose. Um, but we'll, we'll make it nice and, and, and fit properly. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this back to the start. We're going to spray a little lubricant on here, a little cutting fluid. I've already zeroed the dial. The dial's going to tell us how far in and out we're going within a reasonable accuracy. Um, the initial depth we're shooting for is somewhere around 36 thousandths of an inch, um, give or take a few. We'll be watching it. We'll see what the, the thread crest looks like as we're cutting. Um, we're going to cut one depth each thread, so we're going to probably run about five revolutions. We're going to be watching the thread dial here. I've already got tick marks here at the halfway points, 
and when we're done, y'all can come up and take a look at it. Um, and it's going to be a lot of rinse and repeat and paying attention to the dial so we don't go too deep, too shallow, we don't screw up. And if you engage the lead screw at the wrong tick mark, it'll trash everything. So there's a lot going on. Um, and I'm going to make it look easier than it is because I've just done this a lot. Don't be afraid to practice. Try it. Okay? First thing we're going to do is since I've already zeroed it, we're going to bring us back to zero. And we do not want to take that 36,000 cut all at once. We want to do it and at the beginning you can go up to like 10 thou increments and then we're going to start shortening that. We're going to break it down to 8 thou and then 5 thou and then a couple thou a trip. That way the threads are clean, they don't have chatter marks on it and they, they look really good. So the first pass we're going to take is going to be, we're going to do 10 thou. Wait for the number to come around and we're on number one here. First thread and we're going to push it out of the way so we can roll it back. Second thread. Oh, I pushed it too far. And come on up on the third. And coming around for the fourth. All right, and we've got the start of our threads. Can you get a, is it? Close up, maybe? Yeah, can you roll the carriage back? Oh, something? yes, sir. You can kind of get uh, a little bit. You can see the scratch pass that we've already got in place. Maybe too much. So we got nice, evenly spaced, evenly formed threads. Okay? Which is amazing. This is, this is a great machine. Okay. This is South Bend 9A. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the second pass and we went 10 thousandths the first one. We're gonna do about six thou this time. And there's the first one. Second. Third. Four. All right. So, and all gussied up like that, you can see the thread starting to form. Yep. So, let's keep going. We're going to do another, uh, we'll do a fourth out pass this time.
and I'm going to go right into the next pass, which would be another four thousandths. I'm going to keep going. Okay, let's take a look and see what we got here. We got some good crests. We got what looks to be good threads. And right now we're about 20, 20 we're about 31,000. So we're going to take two more passes through all four leads, and then we're going to switch over. We'll cut the internal on the cap. Okay. Questions as I, anything come up as I've been working? Anybody want to come up, take a quick look? Yeah, come take a look at the Yeah, come take a quick look at the thread. Just don't touch anything on the machine yet. Yeah, we're... Yep. Yeah. So the section, ultimately, we end up boring a hole and threading for the section and the converter to fit into, and then that all screws into the cap. So would you bore for before you do this, or do the threading first? I'm threading first. You're going to get chatter if you bore. You're taking away material, and you're going to cause a resonance in the resin, um, and it's, it's going to end up with a choppy looking thread. The idea behind single point threading like this, especially with a solid carbide tool, um, you're going to get a cleaner thread than you ever will with a tap and die. Right. Yeah. Normally it wouldn't have to like, go two steps though, right? Or would you? Uh, the second, in my face, the my second step is closer to the final diameter of the body of the pen because that threading tool is at a 60 degree angle and we're starting really close to the end. Okay. So it's going to leave a little bit just clearing out enough just so you can thread it and then you're going to go yes through, and i don't want it to it. chip because it's right. chamfering a big hangover right. at that stopping point so once you're done with threading then you go and yeah we'll we'll we'd screw it on a mandrel and and, and take care of shaping uh it's from micro 100 it does from 12 to 44 ppi it's got a good range you need a left hand one and a right hand one the left hand one is on there which we thread from behind on the body so that we can go this way. The motor's running in reverse. The lead screw's running normal. You know how you know if you're cutting a left-hand thread? The spindle and the lead screw are running in opposite directions. 
So by doing it this way, both of them are running in the same direction and we're able to get the carriage to travel away from the headstock and I don't have to worry about stopping on a dime, all right? Okay, questions after looking or can I proceed? Okay, proceed. We're gonna give it a little more lube. Okay, and now we'll take the last one. And so that takes care of the body. Oh, come on. All right. So, you want to... This one? Okay. You see the nice even threads. And we'll pass this around. I'm going to need that in a few minutes as we start test fitting. Now the cap, as I told you, we bored out a little over 15 millimeters. And I cut a small relief inside the cap. Um, that way you don't have to cut a little gutter behind the threads. You cut it on the inside of the cap. So those last few threads, it'll thread all the way down onto. Okay. One, so we're going to do three, we're going to do right about there. And I marked this ahead of time so I knew where I was. So you marked it. Half nuts right here. You just marked it just so that it'll line up on, yep. the, on the, normally, and the body. Yeah, normally when I'm doing this, I use a collet chuck on mine. Um, collet chucks always keep things concentric. Three jaw chucks are notorious for always having like almost a three thou total indicator run out. Um, these older chucks are a lot better than that, but not knowing this lathe, I'd rather, I'd labeled each jaw and I labeled the line and the depth I put it in. 
That way I know it's going to be at least as close to concentric as I can make it. Nothing wrong with a three-jaw chuck. If you got one on your metal lathe and you know what the run out is, you can work around it. Um, you can tap things in and whatnot, or if you really want to get fancy, you can get one of them buck true adjust and get it dead nuts. Um, but for my money, you can get a collet chuck for either this little one. The uh, Beal makes the one and, a, one and a half by eight TPI that'll fit all the atlases. All my atlases at home, I've got four of them, are outfitted with that. Um, I've got a 5C on my South Bend and my 12 Craftsman, uh, the Craftsman Profe Professional Atlas, uh, the one with the bigger enclosure and stuff. Um, Nope, for the wood. not even close. Of course, I can't use it for the... <laughs> well, it, actually, the one I have in my atlas won't fit, won't fit this one. This is a bigger spindle. Um, when you're talking metal lathe, you got huge bores. I can, st I can stuff seven eighths all the way through this, this head side. You, you can't get three quarters through any of the one by eight ones. So, yeah, it, it's going this route, you're going to spend some more money. The carbide cutters are 50, 60 bucks a pop. You're going to need two of those. The chuck, same price. They don't upcharge you if it's a bigger thread, uh, which is good. But, you know, then the metal lathe itself, and you have to learn. Right. You can't just plug it in and say, okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to cut threads. There, there's groundwork you have to be willing to do. This isn't a formula. This is something that if you're passionate about doing, these skills go over into all kinds of other stuff. You know, uh, with a metal lathe in your shop and you know how to use it, there isn't anything you can't make at home. Okay, from pipe repairs to bolt to whatever you need. Okay? All right, so the one thing I am going to do, I'm going to swap out this cutter because we need the other one for this. If you recall, I said you needed a left and a right hand cutter. This one happens to be the left hand. But since they are the same size, we're going to make the assumption that when I swap this out, the height isn't going to change. Being on center, uh, you know, with lathe work is important, whether you're on, on a wood lathe or a metal lathe. It's incredibly more important on a metal lathe in order to do accurate cuts. Okay. Let's set this in here. No, no, no. We're still in reverse. Oh. I'm just switching the cutter out so I can do the inside. Yeah. In my mind, before I got here, I actually had this planned out reasonably well. Not that anything is horrible. It's just the reverse thing was kind of unexpected. Okay. So we got this guy in here now. What I am going to do. Um, oh, real quick. Where did the body go? Who's got it? Okay. I'm going to measure the depth I need to thread in. Um, for those of you who have made custom pens, you know, if you go more than a thread or two beyond what you actually need, um, you're going to have some fountain pen enthusiasts looking in your cap saying, how come you threaded like a full inch and a half up the whole thing? You, don't overdo it. So we're marking exactly what we need thread-wise and maybe one or two extra, and we're not going to cut any more threads than that. Um, so I do this like every time. Our, our standard shoulder is this, so I have permanent marks on my tools at home, but we just want to make sure that we're close. Is that something you can see? So I roll the carriage back a little bit. See how I'm, I'm lining up the mark right here just so it's a thread or two beyond. Okay. You don't want to go any more than that. Okay. Which also means that the carriage stop is going to move. So we're going to loosen this up and slide it back. We need to zero the cutter. And by zero, what we're going to do is we're going to run this. We're going to run it forward till we see just a little circle being cut in there. Not much. We just want a scratch pass.
and we're at zero. So we're going to set this dial to zero so I know where the heck I'm at. And then I'm going to back it out a little bit and we're going to put it in the bore until we hit that line and move the carriage stop. So we have our starting point. Okay, so far so good. And now it's just rinse and repeat. We're just inside instead of outside. I do, personally. Um, I know there are others that will do the cap first and then fit the body. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Pick a way that you're comfortable with and go do it. Um, it, it really doesn't matter which way. The other, the other thing people do, um, once you get the depths established, you, you do you know, 30, 40 of these, you know what you're cutting to. You can just go ahead and start cutting parts to those depths and just know that if everything's set up and everything's repeatable, I need to go in 31 thousandths or 38 thousandths or whatever it is on the body, and then the cap is maybe 25 thousandths to get that perfect fit you want. Okay? And I'm going to take a sip of Pepsi, people. Don't mind me. The taste of a new generation. Yeah, that'd be great. Pepsi, that's all I drink, guys. You should pony up, man. Okay. So we're going to do a little cutting fluid in there. We are going to get started. And I'm going to come back to that zero mark. And we're going to do 10 thou like we did last time. And you can hear it already starting to cut. First thread. Oop, missed the number, gotta wait for it to come around. Second. How do I hit it? Come over here, watch. It's a thread I'm cutting into. I get that. So I know that you got the mark set. With practice, we're gonna wait for that four right next to that two. That one right there? Yeah. So as it's coming up, I'm gonna start lifting and it'll just engage on the right spot. You wow. can't engage in between the threads. Okay. And it's in time with the marks. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna go next pass. And we're gonna go six thousandths on this pass. I like to do it in five to six, sometimes more if I hear a little chatter or something weird going on. Um, you could do, you know, 30 one thou passes. It really doesn't matter. Um, but the deeper you cut, uh, the more chatter or potential you'll get. Oh, I think I skipped thread three. Yep.
Okay, we're going to do one more pass, which will bring us to 21 thousandths, and we're going to start trying to test fit and see where we're at and see how much we've got to do. All right, let's see. And this is the beauty of uh, Mr. Cullen's method over mine. Um, I can test fit right now, and if I need to go back in and cut, I just watch the thread dial. Whereas before, I'd be moving the cross slag in and out to go back between the threads. Um, you know, and I, I'd use a, a digital micrometer on here, and it's fiddly you know, to get the exact depth and whatnot. They were accurate threads, but it was a total pain in the butt. Here, if, if we do a test fit here and all of a sudden it fits, you know, we're in good shape. And it's starting, but it's tight. So we'll take another four to six thou and we'll do another test fit. And that's what I, again, that's what I couldn't do before using the other method. This sped up our, our process quite a bit. Get all of it. And here we go. One. Two. Three. Oh, and premature thread engagement. That's the one danger I got complacent, wasn't paying attention. I think we might be salvageable. We got to do that one again. So essentially, I engaged too early on the dial. Um, so we'll have to see. Mm.
Now, let's see how bad that premature engagement did. I don't think it hurt it at all. All right, so what I'm going to do now, folks, um, that relief cut I cut in there, it's kind of hard to see. Um, we're going to go in a little bit and just trim it so there aren't any threads there. I think I cut it a little too shallow. And this is not a bad thing. This is a normal thing, procedure we go through. Huh? Uh, you know, that's a great question. It's probably somewhere around 150-ish. It's um, high speed on the, no, it's low speed on the main pulley and the fastest cone pulley in back gears. So, um, not bad. So, for everybody at home, whoops, whoops, there we go. Two halves. Make a hole. Nice, nice tight thread. And if we look, we can again engage in four spots. And if you look, that lines right up. So I'm going to pass this around. Online people, do we have. Oh. Would you mind holding up the cutter so they can see what tool you were using? To oh, thread? sure. Yeah. Actually, we can open this one up too. So. We're using, and Chad, we can post these yeah, we'll post as them. an article. Yeah. So this is a right-hand 60-degree threading cutter from Micro 100. It goes from, I believe, 12 to 44 TPI. And this is the left hand that we're using on the outside of the body. Same size, 12 to 44 TPI. And we can get you part numbers. Yeah. Uh, we get them from... We get them from Suncoast Tools, great shop down in Florida. Jim, do you have a ballpark of the RPM that's running? I know you said it's a high and low, but... Yeah what, yeah, what I was saying is I believe it's somewhere around 150. A little faster than I usually like, but um, still doable without uh, uh, being able to have the thread dial being whirly bird. Okay. What, what do you personally use? Um, you know, I don't even know because I have a VFD on my Heavy 10. So I can dial it. You know, I, I usually set it up about like, the, I'll put it on the very slowest cone um, and engage the back gears, but I'm running in the high speed on the belt, not the low speed. Um, so mine, when I'm running it, it's probably closer to 175, 200, give or take. Um, and a lot has to do with the pitch. We do two different pitches. We do this one, which is 9 by 4 or 36 pitch, and we do 7 by 4, which is 28. And this is another good thing to note. If you have an 8 TPI lead screw, you can't do a 32 because no matter where you engage that half nut on the lead screw, it's divisible. 8's divisible by 30, or 32's divisible by 8. You're always in one groove. There's no way to get the geometry to do what you want. So if you wanted the 32 TPI, you have to resort to the compound method, or there's a way you can index the, the spindle with the gears, so many teeth in order to accomplish the same thing. There's five or six ways to do multi-start threading on a, a metal lathe. Uh, when I figured it out and was using the compound method, I thought that was the easiest way. And then Tim Cullen, who hopefully he's watching, he said he was gonna tune in today, um, when I went down to Georgia last year, he invited me to go over to his shop. He gave me that little demo on how to do it, and uh, I went back home. I taught the guys that worked for me, and uh, off we went. And it did not take long at all. all right. Any other questions online? I know we've been focusing on the guys here. I want to make yeah, sure. No, nothing online. Um, we'll, uh, we'll continue to monitor if they come up. We'll Maybe we'll grab you and pull you aside later for sure. the, the next demo starting in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So we're going to move out there. So I got to get out of the way. Nope, you're good. Everybody here, uh, there's going to be sandwiches at the front. If you want to grab a sandwich and some snacks and a drink, 
give us a few minutes and then you can take your chairs and move out into the shop and then we'll have that set up in just a couple minutes. Cool. Deadly.